political leader of the National Transformation Alliance. He's also a former police commissioner of Trinidad and Tobago, Mr. Gary Griffith. Mr. Griffith, good morning. Hey, good morning, Marlon. Yeah, always good, good to speak with you, sir. All right, well, let's deal with, with something that happened yesterday and a statement coming from your party yesterday uh, where your party is speaking about a petition. They're looking for 100,000 uh, signatures and it speaks about the removal of the National Security Minister Fitzgerald Hines and also Police Commissioner uh, Erla Christopher. The statement also speaks about a lack of responsibility, also speaks about the murder scourge facing Trinidad and Tobago right now. Okay, yeah, so, so good morning again. The silence is indeed definite, but let me just clarify. So this has not been um, something signed um, by the NT, the National Transformation Alliance. This was Nicole Dyer Griffith. Okay. Um, she in her capacity as someone who is a citizen of Trinidad and Tobago, who is very concerned. And, and she has seen that the silence is definite. We are seeing more um, persons involved in hot debate and um, interest as it pertains to a non-national um, who is no longer going to take part and represent us in a beauty pageant than a situation where four children have been killed uh, in, in one swoop. Uh, a 13-year-old has been killed. And that 13-year-old being killed had to do, uh, again, we, with certain things that have been totally shut down and dismantled. When we had a gender-based violence unit that was alive and kicking, we had an, a police app that was the biggest app in the country, 400,000 hits. We had the SOS reporting, we had online reporting, and all of these things were to ensure some degree of confidentiality, making sure persons were properly trained to ensure, because they understood the sensitivity of these matters when women could be beaten by their spouse or raped. And you don't, in them going to a police station, there's a very good chance that a police officer in that station may very well be uh, aware of who the suspect is. All of these things you have shut down and dismantled. So the blood really and truly is on the hands, not just of the politicians and the police officers who have shut down and dismantled things that we put in place to protect women, but also the things that, that we are seeing now where murders will be taking place, eight murders in 48 hours, and we go the very next day as if nothing has happened. So Nicole Diagraphid, what she has done is say, enough is enough. Let us make one, uh, let us circle the wagons and let us demand that something must take place. The NTA, we endorse um, such, such a, uh, a decision, but what we have seen again, as I said, the silence is indeed deafening. We are taking this as if it is nothing now. Decisions are being made. The country is turning into a police state. We are being washed in blood and no one is saying anything. We are just accepting it. And in my point, as a previous minister of national security, a security advisor, as a member of the defense force, and as a commissioner of police, it can turn around. The, the things that were there before worked. It pegged back criminals. There was a high visibility, a rapid response. The threat was there. The product of opportunity for criminals were no longer there. And what happened? That a few moments later, that had nothing to do with, with me being a magician, but we had technology, we had systems, and I just hope that these things that have all been unplugged can be put in place during uh, uh, and reignited in the upcoming budget. I, I want you to explain this for us, because every now and then we, 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 we hear calls for the uh, Minister of National Security to be removed, the police commissioner to be removed. These are not new calls, and we have heard it over the years when we feel that things have gone out of control when it comes to crime. Now, history would tell us that even if sometimes we remove a national security minister or even a police commissioner that there is not going to be a fall a decrease in crime almost immediately so please if you can tell us about you know the weight that these two posts um carry and why are they so important in the anti-crime process or fight good point we being the only person that held both positions yes. in this country, being a Minister of National Security and a Commissioner of Police. In, it is only in a banana republic we could get this perception. I heard it with Marvin Gonzalez and, and others, where they said, well, it doesn't matter whether you change it, crime will still be there. That is total nonsense. There's something called accountability. There's something called leadership. There's something called measurement of performance. And if these things, you don't measure the performance of persons who hold high office, well, then what is there left? Because it's like saying that uh, you have a business and the business is collapsing and let's not blame the management. They are not, they may not be to blame, but they are responsible. And yes, there will be certain things that will be beyond their control. 
But the catalyst for crime reduction first is the implementation of government policies. The catalyst for crime reduction also has to do with the successful operations of the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service in strategizing and moving forward. So, for example, when I was Minister of National Security, there was never one call for me to, to be removed as a commissioner of police. Likewise, why? And it, it had nothing to do with the results, but making sure, firstly, you're accessible. You have to face the brunt of the media, and which is what I did on a weekly basis as the minister and as the commissioner of police. These two individuals have been hidden. They, do, they do, will do uh, a video, uh, um, then send it out to the media. They do not even want to face the media, face the public. That is the first thing. They are being and they're acting as cowards. If you can't face the media, look at the situation, Marlon. Four young children were killed. And the only thing the Minister of National Security has to say is that we should do a case study about it. Well, yeah, let's do a case study. This is unbelievable. There, you, there were systems in place that made, measured performance of police officers, made them accountable, which is where we had GPS tracking, operational command center, commissioner's command center, the emergency response patrol to ensure you had a five minute response. That provided deterrent, that reduced the product of opportunity. So when it is that you will have seen around the world the removal of persons who hold such office, you will see crime actually going up or going down. And we can even go into this country. I don't want to be political, but every single year since 1991 to 2023, every year the PNM is in government, crime goes up. Every time, every year when the PNM is not in government, crime goes down, except for that year when I was commissioner of police, because I decided to sideline the politics and do what was required, utilizing my um, previous experience as a minister of national security by setting up policies and operationalizing it. So it, if it is that people have been weighed, measured, and found wanting, they must be removed. You can't just say, well, there's nothing else that could be done. Um, even Minister Stuart Young, you would have seen him being very proactive, not stepping out of his crease, and he would have arguably been seen as a competent minister of national security. He worked hand in hand with me. Um, he, he's, he's not on my Christmas list to give a gift, but I, you, you have to give um, horses for courses, and you can see the degree of competence with him as a minister of national security. But in this individual, and is the first minister of national security, who said it's not his job to make, make people secure, to reduce crime. That if you are not aware of your own role and function, and then we have seen what is happening in this country, the buck stops at the top. There are some countries where in, in Canada and other places, in cities that have three times more on uh, the population than us, and they will have about 30 murders, and then there will be a demand for the removal of that relevant person in authority. That is competence. That is professionalism. That is what you need to ensure people must, their performance must be measured, and if they are found wanting, they must be removed. I think uh, it is safe to say um, from what you're saying that the Minister of National Security and the Police Commissioner, they must fuel the fire as it relates to the uh, anti-crime uh, plan and so on. Correct, and, and again, Mola, this is not, if I'm not here to blame Ulla Christopher. It is the police service commission who appointed her. We have gone back to a situation where civilians with no authority, training, or experience, or competence in law enforcement are making decisions. So a prime minister handpicks a president who handpicks a police service commission, and then you call them independent. And then these individuals, the present police service commission, comprise two individuals, two maxims. One is a financial consultant and one is a speaking consultant. No training, qualification, experience, or knowledge in law enforcement. They decided to put somebody who placed, I think, 17th in 2018 by qualified experts that KPMG hired internationally. And that is, and so she got about 30% less than many other persons. And they decided to impose Ola Christopher on Trinidad and Tobago. So it is not her fault. She placed 18 or 17 or so uh, in all who applied for commissioner and deputy commissioner in 2018. You decided to put this lady first. She got 20% less just a year before. So this again is the problem we have. When politicians and politics handpick, they go in and they handpick individuals who may not be competent, and then they get in the position, and then their first thing is to blame society, blame the blame on the community, ask for divine intervention, and try to find every other avenue not to accept the fact that you are responsible. You have 7,000 persons under your command. You could drive this home, and we are not doing it. And the Minister of National Security, likewise, we have 5,000 members of the Defense Force not being utilized. You're not. You, you're pulling the plug on every single policy, plan, operational system I put in place to peg back criminals. We had systems such as technology, Marlon, technology that ensured that we put an end to kidnapping. 
the few moments later, as I said, was not by accident. It was because of technology systems that we did to ensure something known as predictive policing. And that type of technology it, uh, ensured that citizens could give information and we can target kidnappers, break into the doors, seize the, um, um, the suspect, and be able to rescue the kidnapper, the uh, victim, sorry. That is no longer taking place. The same thing with home invasions. As soon as you jump over a wall, you will see a few moments later, we will be there to apprehend the criminal. Now they can go to residence nightclub, shoot someone in their head, which is just 10 seconds opposite the commissioner's residence, and 45 minutes later, a police vehicle will show up. It is not the fault of the officers. They are, they are ready, willing, and able, but they are not going to be able to have that drive, that motivation, unless you have proper leadership. And, they, and again, the Minister of National Security and the Commissioner of Police have failed miserably. And we can't have 200,000 persons in the country turning a blind eye because I'm a PNM till I die. That is not going to protect But I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure that persons, uh, people um, at, at, a higher, at a high level in the police service, uh, they may be viewing the program this morning and may be listening to you and may be saying, well, um, there are still things in place because as you know the the ttps is not going to come and say well look we have lost control of of, of the crime situation i think even in recent times they have tried to put up a, a brave face and, and and try to tell the um that, that try to give assurances to members of the public that they are on top of the situation but judging from what you are saying it it would give the impression that something has gone totally wrong yeah, because uh, again, and this is not the fault of the police officers, when it is we put heavy training on police officers, which again, I, re I recall when I was, uh, I did my training at the Royal Military Academy Sandhurst in the United Kingdom for the Defence Force. The cost that the government, governments put to train officers in the Defence Force internationally is more than the whole budget for training provided for the 7,000 members of the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service. That is how administrations would have trivialized the importance of training for police officers. I put heavy emphasis to train them, not just in, in policing, but in customer service training, public relation. And that is why public trust and confidence moved from 14% to 55%. I bridged that gap and that the, the only persons who suffer for it will be the criminals. So all of these things, the technology, the units, the emergency response patrol, the special operation response team, the social media unit, the gender-based violence unit has been virtually watered down, which is what, again, uh, we could, of course, indirectly, the situation with a young girl being killed. And all of these things, when politicians try to influence and interfere in institutions such as the police service, shut down this, dismantle that, remove this, that the only people who are going to suffer will be the law-abiding citizens because the government has spent more time putting emphasis on legal firearms that, than illegal firearms, which has been the cause of 99.9% .9 of murders by firearms in the last three years. And that alone shows the, when politicians interfere in law enforcement, we are in, we are in um, for dire straits. Let's, let's deal with, with these um, upcoming talks between the government and the opposition. The opposition has already come out and, and have said that, look, we want Gary Griffith to be a part of the talks. Um, I see you looking to smile. <laughs> Has the, has, the, has the opposition um, contacted you? I'm, I'm sure that it's not very difficult to contact you um, and has said to you, Gary Griffith, look, we want you to be a part of the talks. Is that going to happen, that you are going to be a part of the talks? Well, I don't know. I, it all depends on maturity. And Marlon, this is a word, this are, these are two words that are, it's so difficult to see in this country. Political maturity. Trying to get those two words together because sometimes politicians will say, and it, it happened right here where a, a certain very senior government official said, look, I don't like the way that this man is becoming too popular. People like him too much. Let me get rid of him. And he could not find, he found he has tried several red herrings and they've all collapsed. Because when you say the same lie over and over, it's not going to turn into the truth. So in this situation, I decided to be politically mature by saying, listen, the country is under siege. We cannot wait another 17 odd months before the government has changed. We have to deal with it now. And this can't turn around. There are certain things that I know can take place and it happened in other, and you keep hearing this comment that all oh, crime went down because of COVID. In Guyana, Jamaica, and almost every city in, in um, North America, crime actually escalated because of COVID. And again, that, that is because 
when people they, when businesses were closed people lose their jobs is a byproduct towards unemployment and a byproduct towards increased criminal activity after covid most of these countries guyana jamaica and the cities crime went down so that red herring excuse so i know exactly what we can do it worked it pegged back the criminals would this government have the political maturity to say okay we have an issue with gary griffith because he was showing us up let's forget about that let us utilize the support the advice not just from gary griffith but from the opposition you can't expect to try to secure a country by just stating the only people that must have a part to play in in operationalizing the police service or policies is if you have a PNM party card in your back pocket. It is not going to work. This is about good versus evil. This is about law-abiding citizens versus criminal elements. It's not about red versus uh, yellow and blue. We have to circle the wagons and do what is required. If they have the political maturity to sit on the table, I'll be able to explain to them, it's there. I can provide an idiot's guide. It may be difficult, but I can provide to them what is required to peg back the criminals. But again, there's a difference with giving someone something and for them to be able to understand how to implement it. All right. So let, let me be clear. So as long as government um, accedes to the, re the request, you are going to be a part of the talks. Well, I, I, um, I do not want to speak on behalf. Remember, this is something very political. Um, however, the NT is part of the of the uh, of the political uh, landscape now by us actually having a representative in um, as, a, as a woman. So the, we are we can be um, considered part of the opposition. And if it is that comments have been made uh, that we that I would like they would like me to be part of the meeting, I will be more than willing. I have been speaking to other um, individuals in the official opposition, the United National Congress. But as I said, time will tell. I don't want to preempt anything, but I am giving my full assurance to the country that this is not about politics. I will always be a patriot before being a politician, which is why I was the first person that started the ball rolling with this. When I made the statement that I'm willing to meet with the government, explain to them what, what is required. The prime minister, in his usual um, um, personality, he decided to go into a meeting and talk and say, I don't want to talk to anybody. And everybody started clapping like train seals in, in Seawall in Orlando because they thought that that is something good. Let me not talk to the opposition because I don't like them, even though that can save your life or protect your family. You can't be so blinded by politics. And that is why all I'm asking the country, take away the politics for the side. Let us have a deep breath and let us just try to work together towards the one common enemy, which will be that of criminal elements. Gary Griffith. It's always a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you very much for speaking with us this morning. Bye for now. My pleasure.